Hey guys, Funnyuber here. In this video, I'm going to be reacting to my first programming tutorial, as far as I know. So let's get into it. So I'm here on YouTube. It's a 2 minute and 42 second long tutorial. That's as, as long as my current tutorials. Uh, I have desktop audio muted, so I'm going to go ahead and enable that. Um, okay. Now I'm just going to click play. Alright, you can type in import to import. Okay, so first thing I notice is that's really quiet. Uh... I've certainly gotten better with that, as you can tell from how loud I am currently. For a module, you can declare variables by typing in variables. Okay, so I said you could import something, but I didn't actually explain what the import even does. So, when you're programming in Python, importing, well, imports a module that you can use in your code. And for the example of this video, I imported math. But I never used the math module, so why did I even import it and just not delete it? I don't know. And I also didn't use the from operator as well, which is actually a really important operator. Underscore name. There's three types of variables in Python. There's a string defined by quotation marks or these have quotation marks. But I didn't actually explain what a variable is. I just explained the different types of variables that really isn't useful to a viewer when you're making a script and you want to have everything typed out like when you have a variable you need to know what that thing specifically does you can't just have it store data there's an integer defined by a whole number or a float defined by a decimal number and then there's booleans defined by true or false in cap that starts with capital letters you can use the print function to print pretty much anything you want to. And then okay, so I say print as in print anything you want to. Well, for a person that's never been introduced for programming, which is kind of what this is tutorial is for, they're not really going to know what the print does. For all they know, it could need a printer and print something. But I'm just like, okay, let's print something. What I should have said is, let's print something in the console. This is what print does, not print print something. Because that is really open to interpretation. We can run our code, and then we'll say true. And then we okay, so here I ran the code. Once again, this is for a person that's never been introduced for programming before. They probably don't know how to install the Python compiler. And I'm over here running scripts. So, this tutorial's kind of bad for beginners, to be halfway honest. And it's it printing variable name. Like, once again, I didn't define, I didn't tell the viewer what a variable does. So, they would have no idea how any of this works at all. We can define a function such as define, and then we give it a function name. I'm just going to. Okay, so this is still something I'm really bad for. I said define and just typed in def. That's actually how you make a function in python you type in def but i said define and then i just proceed type to type out the function and name. name open and close parentheses end it in semicolon and then we can type in the variable name is equal to what i filled at in explaining this video is scope so in python everything's pretty much in the global scope and you have to specifically define if a variable is local or not i also did a bad job at explaining what a function even is and how to call it so for a viewer that's never programmed in a programming language before you won't really know what this does to false like so and then we can reprint it by typing in print and then variable name and then we can call our function well see here it looks like i contradicted myself because in the Global scope, I said variable name is equal to true, and then in the function, I said variable name is equal to false. But defining and setting variables in Python are pretty similar, and in the tutorial, I didn't really explain the difference between defining and setting. And I should have done that, just so the viewer doesn't think I'm creating two separate variables. ...by calling the function name. Typing it in, and it will automatically open and close. Okay, so, there's nothing really wrong with this part. I mean, you are calling the function, but come on, why would you just use a function to just print a variable? I should have done a better job at explaining the use cases 
for functions, not just what they are. And even then, I did a really bad job at explaining what they are. Close parentheses, and then we can run our code, and then it says it's false. All right, now we can change it to an integer, such as 5. And then we can use math inside the Python, so we can do like 5 plus equals like 5 or something, or minus equals 5. Okay, so there's nothing really wrong with this section. People use math and Python all the time, but I failed to explain that you can add variables together, which might be useful. Uh, so right now I'm just adding a whole number together uh, to a variable, and that really isn't useful unless you specifically know the value of that variable. But if you were, for example, creating a game in Python, you would want to add it to another variable. So I failed to explain you could add variables to other or variables multiply or divide equals five i'm just going to do plus and then we can print variable name like so and then we i also failed to explain greatly that you can create more complex equations other than just plus minus multiply and divide like you can create some really complex applications in, in python using math so i did a bad job explaining what that even is. I just explained how to add a number to a variable, and that's it. We can run our code, and then it says 10. One last thing we'll talk about today is if statements. So if we type in if variable name is greater than, greater than, or equal to 5, we can declare semicolon, and then we can... What I failed to explain is the syntax of an if statement. I explained... I barely explained what one even does and how to use it exactly. And to be honest, I think the syntax is more important than how to use it. Because you can kind of infer how to use an if statement from how the syntax works. But I just didn't explain the syntax at all. And I also failed to explain you can do other operations other than just greater than or equal to. Say variable name is equal to four. And then we can say else. And then we say variable. Okay, so I didn't really need to explain the else, and I don't think I actually did in the video just due to the fact that else is kind of self-explanatory. You don't really need to explain all that much. So I didn't explain it. Variable name plus equals five, like so. so. And then we can print our function by typing in print variable name, and then typing in print variable name, like so. And then we'll run our code because... Okay, so there's nothing really wrong with this section at all. Uh, it's kind of self-explanatory, so I'm just going to resume. It's greater than or equal to 5, so it would say it's 4. But if we were to make it, let's say, 4, it would say it's 9 because it's added 5 to that. So if you found this 3-minute tutorial informative, be sure to... So, another thing I failed to explain is how to gather input from the user, because currently the developer themselves has to edit the variable. Uh, I really could have explained a lot more about receiving input just so an application could actually be useful, and it's not just adding numbers together. But anyways, if you enjoyed this video and think I've come a long way, then be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Helps out the channel, helps good content like this recommend others. That's all from me for now. Fun Huber, out.